Caleb with Brown Owls here. Today I'm going to be walking you through the process of glass bedding a rifle. Now every gunsmith um, has their own technique of doing it. Um, so I'm going to walk you through mine here. And if you follow these steps, uh, you'll have great results. And you, of course you, from that you can develop your own technique. So let's get started. Today we're going to be bedding my Savage Model 110. Um, it's one of the older models. It's a 243 built on the older long action. Um, and the reason we're bedding it is because the fitment in the stock is a bit loose and some points were actually uh, on the fore end were contacting the barrel. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that and bed everything and get a nice consistent fitment between the stock and the action. So getting started, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the stock. As you can see, I've already cut away the barrel channel, get it nice and even on both sides of the barrel and it's not contacting the barrel. So I have a bit of room there to put the acro glass in and get a nice solid fit that's gonna float it so it's not gonna touch the barrel. Now whenever I bed, uh, especially hunting rifles, whenever I bed them, I bed them the length of the chamber and then I float the rest of it in the forend and that gives excellent results as far as fitment and, and shot grouping down range go. Um, and then moving back, we're gonna bed around the recoil lug area. I'm gonna show you how to prepare that on the action itself. And then we're gonna bed around the front action screw where it contact, the action contacts the stock here. And then we're gonna move back to the front of this rear action screw. So let's go ahead and prepare the stock and get it ready to receive the acro glass. So when I did the barrel channel itself, a tool I found very useful actually was to take some sandpaper wrap it around the handle of a hammer, and that gives you a nice round surface to follow the contours. Now, moving back here, I'm gonna use this barrel channel tool here and just remove material from around where the main contact points of the acro glass and the action are gonna be. Now, when you're removing material from these areas, uh, don't take too much material out because that'll make your action want to dip. We're just taking off the surface of the wood um, to give us a nice good surface for adhesion of the acro glass. And that's all we need in the front area. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the rear and do the same thing. And that's all we need there. As I mentioned, um, every gunsmith has their own technique for doing this. Um, and it also dictates on the stock as well. You may need to put some in the rear if you're not getting good contact there. And just different areas like that. But as a general rule, these areas here, this is, this is the basic way of doing it. And this will give you good results. As I said, you can build on this later on. So now that we have those two areas cut, we'll get those wood shavings out of the stock here. Now let's go ahead and get the action prepped. So the first thing I do with the action is I get some clay, just any standard modeling clay will do just fine. And I plug all the holes in the action itself, um, with the exception of the action screw holes because that's where our screws are gonna come from whenever we actually set it into the action, but everything else is getting plugged. Um, the hole for the trigger pin, the vent holes on the side. If you think it doesn't need to be plugged and it's in the action, go ahead and plug it because chances are if you don't plug it, you will get acroglass in it. So let's get started with that. So 
So we've got the majority of the areas that need to be filled with clay filled. The last area I'm going to put it is the gaps in this barrel nut here. And the reason I'm going to do that um, is so that the acro glass just basically fits smooth around it, around the front of that recoil lug. And if for any reason we need to remove and reinstall the barrel nut and it doesn't index in the exact same place, it'll still fit just fine in the stock. Now that this part's done, we have all the clay in place, we can go ahead and move on to taping off uh, areas of the barrel action itself. And I'll show you what areas to tape off and why we need to tape them off. So let's get started with that. So when taping this, the only area we really need to tape is going to be forward of the chamber, the length of the stock, and a little bit past that. The reason we do this is because we want to float this area. So this is where the barrel is not going to be contacting the acro glass. Everything rear of the chamber is going to be in full contact. So you can just do a visual estimate on where the end of the chamber is going to be and then start taping from there. We're going to go ahead and apply our tape to the front of the chamber area. Just center it up on the barrel. And wrap it around nice and smooth. And we cut it longer than we needed um, because we're going to have overflow whenever we set it into the acro glass. Now we're ready to apply our release agent. And when you get the acro glass kit, it's going to come with this liquid one here that you can apply with any standard acid brush. Um, but to make things a bit easier, we are going to be using the aerosol release agent. Uh, now, we need to make sure we don't have any heavy excess oils or grease on our action itself. And then we'll apply a few coats of the release agent and then we'll be ready to mix up our acid glass. Now, we're going to cover everything with release agent from front to bottom um, because if you get any acro glass anywhere on it this will make it way easier to clean up uh, any spills or mistakes or anything like that so this is definitely a must do step there are also a lot of alternatives to release agent that different people use uh, and different people prefer but i always recommend the aerosol release agent uh, because it's foolproof Let this dry for a bit. Right, and we'll just make sure we got around the recoil lug area. Now on some actions, depending on the shape of the recoil lug, you can tape the bottom or back of the recoil lug to make it easier to remove uh, once it's bedded. But on this particular one, we're just going to go straight in with it. Now, as this is drying, we can take rig or any other heavier gun grease will work just fine. And I'm going to apply this 
to the inside of the action, the chamber area where the threads of the barrel meet up with the receiver, and just cover that nice so that's there's no chance of any acro glass sticking in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a, another coat of the release agent over this one. Get that recoil log area good. And we're going to let this dry again. So now that we have everything sealed and the release agents all in place, we're going to go ahead and move on to the stock and get that taped up. Now when moving your action, you want to be careful with it because the release agent is fragile. Now when taping up the stock, we're going to be running right along these top edges and the purpose of this is going to be containing the overflow whenever we press the action into the stock. Um, so we'll just get it run, ran right along the lines of the top edge and trim with the razor blade as needed. So we'll use our masking tape here. And make sure you're using a painter's tape and not anything like duct tape or anything like that um, because it can peel the finish off your stock. So make sure you use a good quality painter's tape. All right, now that we have all the tape in place, we'll just go back and trim it with the razor blade just to make sure we have nice clean lines on the inside once the acro glass is set. Next, what I'm going to do is take the rig, or whichever gun grease you chose to use, and I'm going to run it across this top line right here, so that whenever I start trimming my acro glass away, it'll make it uh, easier to peel off, and you'll see that up here shortly. Okay, 
try not to get any on the inside, just the outside. Now from here we can start mixing up the acro glass. The acro glass gel is going to mix at a one to one ratio and the big question here is how much to mix. Mix more than you're going to need. It's You're always going to get best results if you have too much rather than too little. It's best to have too much overflowing out of it uh, that way you're sure you don't have any air pockets because once you press the action into it you can't lift it back up or else you're going to develop a lot of air pockets and it's going to it's, it's not going to look good at all. So. Getting started on that. We'll open up our hardener here. And the resin. Now the Acroglass gel kits are also going to come with measuring spoons um, and as I said before one to one ratio so we'll go ahead and do that and then I'll show you how to dye them. And whenever I put them into the mixing bowl, I try to put one on one side and one on the other. That way I can visually tell how much of each one I have. And you can use the same spoon for each one. Uh, just make sure you clean it off first so you don't cross contaminate the actual containers themselves. And for that, you can just use a cup of water. Both of these, even when they're mixed, they'll clean up with just water, um, but once they're cured, it, they, they're not affected at all by water, so always keep a bit of water handy when working with hacker glass. And now we can get the resin. Another tip on this as well, I'll tell you while I'm mixing it up, is that the resin can crystallize and become a bit hard. And if that ever happens to you, all you need to do is heat it up to get it back down where it needs to be. And you can do that in a microwave. Uh, just remove the foam lid from it, place it in the microwave with the lid on loosely. Microwave for about 10 seconds, mix it up, and you'll be good to go from there. And looking at that there, we'll add a bit more of the resin. And from here, we'll mix it up and get a good visual on how much we have. And as I mentioned before, we're going to be doing the full length of this stock, the recoil lug area, 
and then the rear area as well. So this should give us plenty for that. So now we'll move on to the die. The Acroglass Gel kits are going to come with two dies. They're going to come with the black and the brown. Um, and that's going to be determined by the stock you're using. For this one, we're going to be using the brown because, of course, we have a brown wood stock. And as far as the die is concerned, a little bit goes a long way. So we'll add a bit, mix it, see where we're at, and add a bit more if needed. You can also mix dyes to get different colors. Uh, if you wanted a really, really dark brown, you could add a hint of black in it as well. And we'll add just that small amount there and mix it in. and we're gonna mix it until it's all one nice uniform color. And looking at it, you can see our stock has a bit of a red stain to it, um, but this is going to get us pretty close, and this this will this will be good for this project. All right, and we'll go ahead and apply it to the stock. And when I'm doing this here, I like to just start up front and work my way back. And once you press the barreled action in all of this is going to flow out over the side and that's what you want you want to have enough in there so it flows over the side and that's how you know you're not going to get any air pockets and the channel gets wider as you get closer to the rear so you'll need to use a bit more than you did in the front Fill that recoil lug area there. And I'm just packing it down, getting it into that recoil lug area. Because that recoil lug itself is going to make the mold and it's going to push all the excess out whenever we press that action in. Now we'll move on to the rear. And our main concern in the rear is going to be this high shelf right here. Not a whole lot of area, but that's our point of contact with the action. Now we're ready to set it. So I'm gonna lift this up a bit here. Just get, make sure everything is ready to go. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do beforehand 
Let's take my action screws and I'm going to completely cover them in rig. So I don't want any acro glass adhering to them because they're going to be in direct contact with it, especially on the threaded area. And I'm just going to get those ready. And now we can go ahead and set the action. Since I had it sitting there, just going to do a visual inspection here and make sure my release agent's good. And we're ready to go in. Press the action in. You want to see the acro glass oozing out. And we got that here, and that looks great. I'm going to take some surgical tube and wrap it at the back here. I don't want to press down on the front because that's going to lift the back of the action. And now I'm going to go ahead and insert my action screws. Snug that up a bit and then go to the rear. Snug that up and then come back to the front. And as you snug this up, you'll be able to see the acro glass oozing out. And you'll be able to feel where you need to be there and don't put too much on the rear one because you'll lift it up but just make it nice and snug and now all we need to do is wait for the acro glass to, to cure up a bit we'll give it roughly four to five hours uh, we won't let it cure fully because if we let it cure fully we won't be able to come back with a razor blade and trim it um, we'll have to cut it away because it'll be rock hard. So if we come back at the four hour mark, it'll still be nice and pliable so we can cut it and it'll still cure just fine. All right, now that we're about four hours into the bedding process, we can go ahead and get rid of the surgical tubing. We're gonna go ahead and break the action free from the stock. All right, so the first step is gonna be to remove the action screws.
Now that we have the action screws removed, what I like to do is just go into the chamber area here and there will be a piece of ac acro glass that came up through that screw hole and we're just going to go ahead and scrape that out. That'll come right out. All right, now we are ready to break the action free from the stock. And the way I like to do this is to place the butt on the table. And then while gripping the stock, but supporting the barrel with a finger here, um, so that whenever we break it free, it falls from the stock, but we're also able to catch it. And I'll just take a rawhide mallet and give it a quick wrap. And there it is. And if you'll notice, there's a very thin layer just behind the recoil lug and also a very thin layer on this back area here. And that's perfectly fine. Um, the bulk area of where that recoil lug is filled, you'll notice before when we did it, that was a much larger slot. Now it's just supporting that recoil lug. And also, of course, the length of the chamber is in full contact. And then this textured area, because the tape we used was textured, um, that's going to be a floated area there. The barrel's not going to be contacting that. So now we can go ahead and cut away the excess and then we can go back to letting it finish cure. And for this I'll use the same razor blade I was using uh, whenever I was trimming the tape. and just run it right across the top. And you can see it there, peeling away. Just be careful to let that, let the razor blade just glide along the top edge of that tape and you'll be able to fill it as it does. And I'm going to stop right there just so you can see how we have that nice clean edge now. And let's go ahead and take care of the rest of it. I'm also going to go into the magazine well area and remove all the acro glass from there because um, that's where the magazine box is going to need to go back in and we don't need any acro glass in there whatsoever. We do the same thing in the front.
So now that that's done, all we need to do from the stock is remove the tape, um, cut away any minor areas that, that are still existing there. Some of the tape may have stuck to the glass. Um, so just cut that out as well. And that's it for the stock. Um, the action, all that's left is to remove the clay, remove the tape on the barrel, and then just clean up all that release agent using your standard gun cleaning equipment. And um, of course, reassemble it, put the trigger back in, magazine box, reassemble it, and you're good to go. You're ready to hit the range. Now, glass bedding, no matter what you're using, um, it all comes down to the prep work. The more prep work you do, the easier it's going to be to get everything cleaned up and uh, ready to go back together. Uh, so like most other jobs, the quality of the outcome is all in the quality of the prep work. If you have any questions on bedding, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.